Hey guys, so we have ended the week on a red day. Candle's green, but it's a red day. So let's take a look about where we're at in this market right now and just overall everything that's happening. So the question is right now, are the bulls or are the bears in control? Let's look at everything that happened this week. Um, in my opinion, the market has absolutely not accepted the reality of what it faced this week. So let's go back and see what happened this week. Um, on Tuesday, I think Meta reported, yeah, Tuesday, we got Meta. Um, no, sorry, Meta was Wednesday night. Whatever night Meta was. They posted a 20% miss. 20% miss on earnings. That is massive. And what did they do? They rallied 30% intraday for one of their biggest days they've had in over 10 years. Absolutely ridiculous. And then you have Jay Powell himself stand up to the markets and say, hey, um, we are going to do a couple more rate hikes. Not saying, hey, there'll be one more rate hike. Saying a couple more rate hikes. He said unemployment is too low still and the labor market is far too strong. And he also mentioned, and he was very clear, I will not be pausing rates and I will not pause rates and restart them, which means he's going to stick to these rate hikes for quite a long time. And what did the markets do? They said, okay, j Paul, we hear you, but we're gonna rally $10, excuse me, $10 intraday and then open up the next day, one of the biggest green opens we've ever seen after FOMOC day. Not only that, they also started pricing in rate, rate cut hikes, or sorry, rate cuts for end of year, 50 basis point worth. That is absolutely just stupid, this way the market has react reacted to that. And then after that, the next day, so this is three things right in a row. We have three of the biggest companies out there, Apple, Google, and Microsoft, or sorry, Amazon, all three on the same night missing on earnings, and Apple posting one of its worst earnings it's had in a very long time, Apple manages, as you see, well, I guess you can't see off to the side here, but Apple manages to close up 2.44%. So after a huge miss, Apple manages to close green somehow. Thankfully, Amazon was the only reality one that dropped 8.4%. Google did close down 3%. And then not only that, so that was Thursday night, we got those three big misses. The next morning, we get the lowest unemployment rate that we have ever gotten in the last year, 3.4%. We got some of the best non-farm, or ten, the 10th ten upside surprise on non-farm payroll. And what does the market do? It opens down 1.2%, a completely rational reaction, reaction for the change. And then it manages to open up and rally almost six dollars to, to then go green on a day after something like that just absolutely detached from reality like i understand looking back at this bull rally that we've been in now for five or six weeks six weeks really now um, like back here, this was consolidation, healthy consolidation. Even these upside moves here and then this retrace and this upside move, everything realistically until FOMOC day was healthy bull market movement. Everything right here was with the technicals. Everything made sense. Nothing was like, oh, this doesn't make sense. You know, we had pushes, we fought 400, we fought the daily 200 EMA, we came back, we retraced, and we held support, and then we pushed higher, we retook stuff, we tested eight, the 8 EMA along the way, the 20 EMA around the way. Everything made complete sense until FOMOC day. Once FOMOC day hit, the markets lost all sense of reality. We are now trading on just, I don't even want to say extreme momentum, just like, I, just extreme non-reality of the circumstances of what the market is hearing. So now the question is, with j Powell speaking on Tuesday, we are now officially on the fear and greed index at extreme greed. We have CPI coming on the 14th, so not this week, but the week after on that Tuesday. So two more Tuesdays of trading. What is going to happen next? So let's take a look at where we're at here. We're in the bull mark or the bull channel right here. We have been in this bull channel officially since December 28th, about five weeks of the daily bull channel. 
Um, so what happened basically is we had FOMOC, we had a pop off yesterday. One could say this was maybe a blow off top. Um, we came up here, we ended the bear market officially. I know there's some discrepancies and people are confused. When I say end the bear market, I don't mean we're going to all time highs. I mean, by the technical definition, when we break over that 20% retracement, that technically ends it. Now there is discrepancies about whether you should close over it or you just can break through it. But per the definition that's out there, that ended the bear market anyways. And then we came down. So we now have a nice breakout triangle form right here. Key support will be down here at 407.6 and key resistance will be 415.2 for Monday. So something to point out is this massive gap right here. So this kind of happened up in this area. We kind of just blasted up and then we had to come back and retrace and get some support. Same thing kind of happened here. We had this huge push up and then we had to come back and find some support. So we have not really came down and tested any other support areas down here in this 406.4 to 410.8. You see we had one little wick up here and this was FOMOC day. We just straight pushed through it. And then realistically, even back in December, it was a push up and then we straight dumped. So besides trading the first week of December here, we have not really even done any trading in this area. So I will look for this area to be filled in and tested and put some supports or resistances in here. So let's look at the weekly here. So this is that bull channel I'm telling you about here. This one is more six weeks long. You got one, two, three, four, five, six weeks now. So on a bullish standpoint here, we have the eight about to cross over the 100 weekly EMA. We did hold the 50 weekly support EMA. We did break through my key 408.8 .8 resistance. And now we try to break out, but we did fall back down. So I mentioned this channel um, back in really December that I thought majority of our trading is going to take place realistically between 375.8 and 409 with the extremes of 427.5 and 375 or sorry, 356 um, down there. So the further we get over 409, the more I look for a retracement back to really 409 to 400 area is a 400 is the first support area. And then we have 390 after that is our midpoint. So the further we get over this line, the more I am looking for a retracement. Now I do see a case next week where we could continue this rally into CPI and then maybe CPI week will put us back down finally on a bigger retracement for two weeks or three weeks right here. But um, we're kind of an unknown up here because you can see this 417 area, which you can see we rejected off of here. And if you go back, um, 417 is right here. You can see we really double topped off that on the daily is a pretty major level. If you look back here, this is where we failed our rally back in uh, June too. So it is pretty safe to assume that we could see this as our rejection point and we could see a retracement back down. Now, if we can hold 406, that is bullish and that will still be the support. And if you look at the daily here, this 405.3 to 406.5 area is a big support area that I will watch. And realistically, even if we break this bull channel, if we hold 405.3 to 406.4, much like we did right here in this retracement, then I'm going to be bullish and I will be looking for a push up. However, if we lose this area, then I will feel pretty confident that we're going to come back to the 390 to 400 area. So this is where we're going to be watching next week uh, on a retracement. This 409 area is going to be the first major target. And this is where I'm actually even going to be targeting on Monday. Um, my initial thoughts here, because J-Pow speaks on Tuesday, is we might get the dump on Monday or we very well could just kind of consolidate in this 410.9 to um, 417 range and then maybe if j Powell says something significant we will see the sell-off start or i mean we could end up like that wall street journal interview where we end up going this is back here on november 30th so we just have a massive pop but i'm more looking for if you remember jackson hole right here this is more of the scenario i'm looking for um, we'll see what happens though taking a look at futures here so we came up here, we have the blue bull channel, and then we have what I'm calling the extreme bull black channel right here. So with this support here, we need to open 
over 4175 on Mon Monday, Sunday night for futures. If we do not, then we break this support line. And you can see this support line goes all the way back to January 31st. Um, then we should expect a retracement. So I do think Monday will see a retracement. Now, I don't know how low it will go. But the also thing to keep in mind is that this blue bull channel would still be intact on Monday all the way down to 4060. So we have a lot of room to go if we retrace. The biggest area I will watch is this 4095 area. And you can see the same thing here, 4095 realistically to 4130 is very uncontested. It just was straight gapped over it and then we have this huge area. So I would really like to see this come down and make a support at like 4110 or 4120 or something. At least make some attempt to fill something in down here and put a support in this area. Um, so that's what I'm be watching for. Same thing here on the weekly. We have our nice area here. Our extremes are 4280 and 3600. Um, our resistance right here, this 4148, you can see this goes all the way back, all the way back here to June, same thing here, and it was even contested back here in August. So and this is where we did die on CPI back in this week too. So this very well could turn into a double top off 4148 and we could see a retracement. This could be the top here, something like this, or even something like this right here, especially like, especially like this right here could absolutely be happening. So key supports on the weekly is 4160 and then up here at 4260. Take a look at Tesla here. Tesla is just incredible. If you look at this from the bottom to the top here, almost a 96% rally from the low on January 6th to today. So basically a straight in a month, in a month of trading, Tesla has rallied almost 96%. That's just absolutely incredible. So where we're at now is I had mentioned that this 197 level was a major pivot point. You can see when we lost it back here in November, we came down, we rejected it, came down, rejected a second time, and that started the major sell-off. So it is no surprise that this is a hard level for them to get back through. So this is the second day in a row here that we have hard rejected 197 and second day in a row that we have closed under 190.2. So we have our extreme bull channel here. That support level is at 187.6. So that's only about a th really about a $3, 2 to $3, so about 1 to 2% drop. Um, 1, 1 to 2% drop on Monday. And if we drop more than 1% to 2%, then this should open the downside here. This is just so extreme right here that there at some point will be a, excuse me, will be a retracement. Obviously, you can see, though, that 183 points or 184 really has turned into a pretty big support. And that actually is the 100 EMA also. So this we're really kind of stuck between two major levels right here. We have 197 and we also have 184. So these, whichever one of these breaks first, realistically, we should see a pretty big pop. I just don't think Tesla after 96% really has much more to go to the upside. I could be wrong. We, it, it still very well could, could trade up, but I think it's upside right now realistically is, is tapped. Take a look here at the weekly. Um, same thing here. You can see if you go back to this November here, when we traded around the 200 EMA, it was not just a straight breakthrough. We came down, we bounced hard off of it, and then we kind of traded, traded, finally lost it. So I would expect the same thing here. So the fact that we broke over it and we hard rejected, um, especially this 195.6 area here, 195.2 area here, we hard rejected that, which you can see pretty much is the pivot point. Um, that's kind of similar to that, uh, this 197 right here. So we hard rejected that and we closed actually below 190.6. So realistically here, we should expect at least a support test of like 178.3. And then we could maybe attempt another move up. Weekly support though is at 190.5. So pretty much unless Tesla opens green next week and trades green the whole week, it will break this support line and that should open the downside. So it'll be very intriguing to watch what happens next week on Tesla. Take a look at the VIX here. The VIX has been very interesting. So for two days in a row now, the VIX and SPY have not traded how they 
generally should trade. So yesterday we witnessed the, the VIX put in a 4.82% green day and SPY also put in a green day. Today, SPY opened down 1.2%. At the same time, as you can see, the VIX opened at 18.6, which it closed at 18.3. So it also opened down. And it even dropped as low as 17.93 at one point. So while SPY was down, the VIX was also down. But then, end of day, the VIX shot up pretty incredibly again to this um, 19.3 area. The second day in a row here, we've tried to hit this 19.3 area and that we've broken over this 19.1 um, level, but then we sold off. So now we're kind of in an interesting spot here of this could be a temporary bottom and we start to move up on the VIX, which would track with the fact that we are nearing the top and should see some sell off. So I'm watching the VIX very clearly as despite the fact that the market wants to act like it's not reacting to the news and it, I mean, it just honestly straight up is not, has not properly digested um, any of the news that has happened this week. I think there is a very high potential that we could get a very big VIX day, something like this right here and start a trend up. And then it finally will price in, not price in, but adjust and kind of digest what's actually happened the last couple of weeks or a couple of days here. Last thing is Bitcoin. We have still not broken through 23.7. So Bitcoin has officially stopped pushing and it is looking weaker. This tells me we are nearing the top of the rally for SPY with the with Bitcoin slowing like this. So I'll be watching this weekend, especially if it happens to get a big sell off under 22.6. That would really key me in on a sell off coming next week. But I do think that Bitcoin is telling us that this rally is definitely reaching its reaching one of its peaks. So, all right, I hope you guys had a good week trading this week and I will see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, and like to stay updated. Uh, drop a comment if you have any questions. This is the permanent Discord link. Um, sometimes that does not work for whatever reason. Just go ahead and drop a comment, send me a message, um, and I will get you an updated link so you can get to the Discord. Some of the advantages of the Discord is I do a pre-market update with key support and resistance levels every day. Um, and also throughout the day, I do live uh, intraday commentary on SPY and the general market. Um, and I also do live intraday buy and sell alerts. You can follow me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok as Spy Optioner and on Reddit as Daddy Dersh.